Hello students, in this video we'll discuss normal operators. We say that an operator, a linear operator of course, T mapping V into V is normal. If T commutes with its adjoint, if T star T is T T star, i.e. T commutes with the adjoint. T commutes with its adjoint. Okay, and normal operators are special because they, they preserve norm structures, right? So in other words, we have the following couple of propositions. So notice that T is normal if and only if T star T minus T, T star is the zero operator, okay? And so, of course, this is equivalent, this is equivalent to saying that for any V in your vector space V, you have the following. You have that T star T V minus T T star V is equal to zero. Now what I want to do is I want to pair this pair this relationship with V itself, right? So it's in particular true for a non-zero V. And so what I can say is the following. This automatically implies that T star T V. And of course, we're assuming that this V is an inner product space, right? Inner product space. Okay. That's the natural that's the natural domain for which the, on which the adjoint exists, right? V with V is going to be equal to T, T star, V, V, like that. Now, of course, the common trick, of course, what we're going to do is we're going to pass the adjoint to either side over here. So I'm going to do is I'm going to pass the adjoint over here and then pass the adjoint over here, right? And if we pass the adjoints, we have that T, T, V, T star star V is equal to T star V T star V. Okay. Of course, the double adjoint is just the uh, operator itself. And so this implies that for normal operators, we have the following relationship. So this is true, of course, if and only if this, if and only if this, if and only if T V squared is equal to T star V. All right. So in other words, the norm of a normal operator on a vector is the same thing as the norm of the adjoint on the operator. Uh, the norm of the the norm of the adjoint applied to the vector. Okay? So that's this is a this is a, one of the fundamental properties of normal operators that this relationship over here. So you're normal if and only if this is true, right? So you're normal if and only if this is true. Okay? And so now let's relate the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors of normal operators, right? So proposition If T is normal with eigenvalue lambda corresponding to eigenvector V, then T star of V is lambda bar V. Okay, in other words, the adjoint has the same eigenvector corresponding to the eigenvalue lambda, but with the complex conjugate of that over there. Okay? So I'm going to prove something like this. Well, let's do the following. Okay. The proof is actually straightforward, so let's do it. So proof of this fact is the following. Okay? So T normal if and only if, if and only if what? If and only if T minus lambda identity is normal. In other words, if you subtract off lambda identity, that being normal is equivalent to this. And of course, how do you see that? Well, of course, that says that T star T, the star of this is going to be what? So the star, since T minus lambda identity star is T star minus lambda bar identity, right? So in other words, if we hit this with itself over here, so if I was to hit that with T 
minus lambda ah, ah, minus lambda identity, excuse me. That's a minus lambda identity. T minus lambda identity. We'd have T star T and then minus lambda bar, minus lambda bar, plus then minus plus lambda identity. Because this will give me a times t, times t. And then all the plus lambda plus modulus lambda squared identity over here. Okay. And one of these is going to be a t bar, so let's, let's do this carefully over here. So that's not quite right, so let's do it carefully. So what we have over here, so that's not quite right. It's going to be t, t, t star t, and then minus lambda bar t, and then minus lambda t star and then plus modulus of lambda squared identity, okay? Right? And so, of course, we see that this F, at, the same thing is true if I commute the order of the operation, right? So in other words, this, I can flip the order of this, and it won't change anything over here. Everything will be paired in the, same exact, in the same exact order if I put this operation first over here, since t is normal. The only thing I need to make sure it can change is this will stay the same, this will stay the same, and this will stay the same. And then if I flip the order, all it will change is the t and the t star will flip. So in other words, we know that t is normal if and only if t minus lambda times the identity is normal, right? So in other words, what can we say now? That's great, because now we can prove our proposition. Our proposition is now straightforward. Proof. I know that t minus lambda identity applied to the vector v is going to be equal to zero because I'm assuming that t has an eigenvalue of lambda corresponding to eigenvector lambda star, but I know by our previous proposition over here that this is exactly equal to just the same thing as the norm of the adjoint applied to v. And so that says that the norm of the adjoint of t applied to v, so in other words, this is equal to what? This is equal to t star minus lambda bar identity applied to v, right? In other words, if t has an eigenvalue of lambda corresponding to eigenvector v, then t star, this implies that sigma of t star contains the point what? The spectrum of t star contains lambda bar, and that proves our proposition. So in other words, the most, one of the most salient features of these normal operators is that the norm of t of v is equal to the norm of the adjoint of t applied to v for any vector v, and that immediately allows us to conclude that the eigenvalues of the adjoint are the same as the complex conjugates of the eigenvalues of the original operator that correspond to the same eigenvector. And the fact that that eigenvector is the same is going to play an important role in the spectral theorem and our proof of the spectral theorem for normal operators. Thank you very much.